And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Today we're talking about Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Yeah, I know I'm probably like the last person making a video about this one, we're a little behind, but we wanted to give it like the honest try and not rush it. This game is the follow up to Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now Wildlands was a game I wasn't very hot on at launch, you know, from technical PC issues uh, to the game just not being very fun for me personally as an older school Ghost Recon fan. Uh, despite that, I do want to acknowledge that Wildlands got updated and had stuff added to it quite a bit and found itself a lot of fans. I appreciate that it turned into a more solid game. I just wanted to put that out there. Breakpoint, to me, seems like more of the same. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it seems like a foundation set for a fun shooter game world. There is a lot of uh, cons here, a lot of bad though. Uh, does the foundation really make it worth jumping into right now? Mm, we'll get to that. Some housekeeping, this footage here is recorded on an Xbox One X and is mostly early hours of the game, except for a few parts. Uh, so don't worry about spoilers if you care. Anyways, uh, first off, the stuff I like. You feel like way less of a pawn in this new world and way more of someone who has an active role. The story puts you on a massive private archipelago, uh, Aurora, inhabited by uh, the campus and employees of a big, fancy, futuristic Silicon Valley technology company. It's like a technology corporate utopia type thing. But, of course, things go south, and there's an occupation, and mercenaries all over the place being led by the Wolves, a big, fancy, bad guy group of ex-Special Forces guys uh, with an idealistic leader portrayed by the always fantastic John Bernthal. First of all, I just want to say, I, I wish we could play as them because they're probably the most interesting aspect of the story and they look way cooler. They look like these weird Star Wars Destiny characters. That's just a random personal thing, I digress. Uh, you create your own good guy soldier. Personally, I made kind of like a generic knockoff John Cena uh, and your soldier, man or woman has direct ties to the conflict at hand thanks to a military past with the bad guy John Bernthal. You learn why he went astray and ultimately what the hell is going on in this environment and I don't know why, but you know, despite it being corny and a little exposition heavy with a lot of uh, not so great voice acting for the side characters, I, I did find myself intrigued. I genuinely found myself wanting to see what happens next, which is a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Especially considering with Wildlands, I didn't give a damn. Breakpoint definitely steps it up in this regard. Now, what I did not like was endlessly slogging around the outpost camps, uh, like your home base, pushing other characters and NPCs out of the way in the hub world just to get a new side quest. Like, it all slowed things down way, way too much, and I wanted to be there as little as possible and out in the game world doing stuff, uh, despite the game world wanting me to spend such a decent amount of time there between missions. But when you are out in the world, you get some pretty solid shooting. Feeling similar to Wildlands, I think this is the game's greatest strength. You know, the light cover, uh, the ability to take it slow and crouch or go completely prone, uh, the third person over the shoulder view where you can switch to first person view. All of that feels smooth as butter. Even with the controller console version I got stuck playing with with this time, I, I enjoy the core shooting in this game. The cover system shows its problems in indoor environments, especially though, uh, the game throws you in lots and lots of indoor smaller house environments and your character looks and feels like an absolute dummy every time you accidentally hit cover or, or, or move off of it or spin around and the camera gets stuck and well, it's a hot mess really. The cover even sometimes works outside not so hot. Sometimes I would try and move one way, my character would disagree, move another way, I'd be out in the open, I'd get shot. But it also just doesn't help like when you're shooting some pretty dumb enemies. It's 2019 and I know technology has improved and enemies can do so many things. I know there's all these numbers and ones and zeros behind these enemies, but I still felt more challenged by the enemy in like the classic games from the 2000s. I appreciate there are a variety of different types of enemies and the encounters with higher level enemies like the wolves are way more challenging and have way more of an impact on gameplay. But really like the moment to moment battles with the standard enemies, I just found really, really dull. They all felt like mindless fodder. Now I think it's a game best taken slow. You can play how you want, but I prefer sneaking around, marking enemies with my drone, uh, which still doesn't feel quite right. So many other games have kind of done this better. It, it's hard to put my finger on why, but it's just feedback wise and, and how it works. But picking off enemies one by one still is fun. Systems wise with stealth and like the detection meters and stuff, it doesn't feel like the best stealth game ever, 
but the larger environments allow me to just tackle things however I want. And I think that freedom is why people come to these games. Using your tech to your advantage or go in guns blazing. I use stealth and sneak around until things go hot and then I run and gun. I wish the game were more punishing overall, but again, that's just me. It makes it feel all at odds with itself because like it has the big open world encouraging you to get in crazy adventures and do stuff and hijinks, but the encounters and enemies and most other mechanics don't really jive as much with that idea. It just feels at odds with itself, like an identity crisis, like what this game wants to be. Wildlands was kind of like that too. This is of course my personal opinion. Other people really disagree with this, but that's me. Thankfully though, there is a lot to do. There are main missions of which, you know, you can have some degree of freedom with which lanes you tackle. And then there are side quests in your outposts. Uh, then there are also faction missions that are updated, I think daily, if you wanna just keep playing and grinding like crazy. From your base, you can also engage in some PVP action, which was something I appreciated was in Wildlands and I I'm glad it's here too. It's just good for variety. It's not that bad, and it just adds more stuff to play with the game. Then there are also random civilians who will give out quests out in the open world that you can stumble across. It gets pretty overwhelming fast, but that's good or bad depending on your preferences and how much you like taking on, you know, mostly mindless quests. If you're playing alone, like me, pretty much a dedicated single player loner person, you're gonna feel like an afterthought sometimes. You have no AI companions with you this time, you're alone, and you can't really get yourself into as many, you know, like I said, wacky open world antics. Uh, you can still do a sync shot, thankfully, but it's with your drone in place of squad mates. Uh, this and Wildlands is a game I will absolutely admit is better played with friends. I use that line for a lot of games, but you know, here, I shouldn't be bored when playing alone, especially when the hub world is filled with online characters for no reason, and there are icons constantly pushing me to search or invite other players. Not only that, but this is an always online game that really frustrated me. Always online games are becoming more and more of a thing, and I've grown to accept it sometimes, but with Wildlands, a game where like I was just truly kind of open world exploring and wandering around and watching cutscenes and talking to NPCs, I shouldn't lose connection or PSN or Xbox Live dies or whatever, and then I am immediately booted to the main menu. Just like that. It sucks. Th that really sucks, and I, I think that needs to be sorted out ASAP. I know this is a live service-y, games as a service type game. Ubisoft at the very least has been upfront about that this time, but it, it, I just still don't like this aspect of it, especially if it does offer up so much gameplay for solo people, that I don't want that to happen. I will say that I think the actual game world itself is too big. It was big in Wildlands, and they said Breakpoint would be a more contained region that was more focused, and I was excited about that, but it hasn't felt that way to me. There are big, vast, meaningless stretches of land that look pretty, but that's about it. I actually found the game world pretty bland. The trees, woods, plains, cold mountains, swamps, it's pretty much an environment checklist. Although I did like the Silicon Valley spin, it did make some areas feel weirdly like Watch Dogs 2, and I kinda like that. Uh, one thing I do like about the environment is the emergent objective stuff. Points of interest on the map are only populated if you actively explore and do stuff. Hack computers, pick up scraps of paper, and talk to locals to get new blips that pop up on the map that'll often just lead you to more experience points or extremely coveted loot and special weapons parts. Other Ubisoft games have done this in terms of how the map gets populated with objectives, and I really like it. I hope they keep doing this. Which is, this is also where I'll compliment the game though. Progression is fundamentally upgraded and improved. Picking up loot, weapons, and just outfitting your person with better gear and your gun with more parts gave me a lot more incentive to play. A, a pretty interesting skill tree also feels larger and has meaningful stuff to unlock that changes how you play. You know, sure, in this game world, you know, like a gun is a gun, so a headshot is still a headshot. These characters aren't RPG enemies, quite something like uh, Destiny or The Division 2. So you could argue that weapon loot isn't that big of a deal, but I think since the core shooting is so fun, I didn't mind trying new guns, and the pursuit of better attachments is where the weapon loop shines. I really think this is one of the things in the game, the few features, a few aspects of the game that will keep me playing. The added survival elements are a little half-baked, but don't really hurt anything. You can find and unlock camps or uh, bivouacs to rest, progress time, craft some little items like healing and stuff, and you can also choose from eating, 
drinking or other things to give yourself sort of like a temporary buff for the upcoming battle. It adds a little more strategy and preparation. Yeah, stamina is the big one to worry about, so you can also uh, bring a canteen with you and drink from it and refill it in order to keep your sprinting stamina bar from getting crappy. It's all pretty slight, really, but it doesn't detract or get annoying, thankfully. I, I think they should have done more with it. Uh, but then, of course, we gotta get to it. There's the microtransactions. There's the in-game spending. If you've been keeping up with the news, early access to the game caused quite a stir when the game launched uh, with an in-game store filled to the brim with obnoxious microtransactions. Everything from buying better guns to just progressing faster and skipping time. Ubisoft immediately took most of this down after word got out and people got mad. I wanna be fair and mention that they did that, uh, but they did say that they are going to put the microtransactions back in at some point. And I also wanted to say that through my playing, I, I never felt pushed or forced towards spending any money to level up faster or get a better gun at all. But it's important to point out that we don't want these options in a game like this at all. I, at least I think that the majority of players don't. So it's something to be aware of and you need to be informed. Technical issues as well are worth being aware of if you're sensitive to them. On higher consoles, uh, you can choose between graphical fidelity or performance. I'm weird, sometimes I usually opt for graphics, but the game's frame rate really chugged at times. Not only that, the game is just straight up buggy, man. Like I've gotten stuck in the environment with glitches. I've gotten stuck in a falling animation down a cliff, which is something you do a lot and it's annoying. Uh, and I, I had the game crash. It's rough around the edges, it really is. Aspects of this game just feel rushed. It feels like the bones of a great playground for multiplayer squad shooting tactical zaniness, but it's just unfulfilling otherwise. Nothing has the energy it should in encounters. This is a massive world. Uh, there are a billion quests, but they're not super exciting. The gear loop is exciting, but if you're a good shot, how much of it really matters? Late game stuff does matter in that regard, but still. It's frustrating because the actual act of shooting feels so good. Unfortunately, it's just what you're shooting at, where you're shooting, and why you're shooting that aren't so great. It's just frustrating. I, I don't think it's as much of a disaster as everyone is saying, but I still personally just don't like it. I think down the line, quest overhauls, quality of life improvements, uh, interface and, and bug stuff being fixed will make this a much better game. I'm just not sure if I'd still wanna go back anyway and play more. But that's just me, of course this is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Everyone has had their hands on this game if they cared, so by now you probably have some sort of an opinion formed about the game. I wanna hear from you. A lot of people always say that I'm too easy on games, and I do admit I like to always find the good in games, but I was pretty hard on this one, so I wanna know what you guys think. I wanna know what you're thinking of Wildlands if you played it, or maybe you've just been watching videos. What are you thinking? Now if you enjoyed this video and maybe learn something about the game, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.